Hello and welcome to Unique Genius in 33. Each Wednesday at 1130 Central, 1230 Eastern, we take a deep dive into one of the 34 talent themes revealed by the Clifton Strengths Assessment. And we do it in just 33 minutes. Today is May 27th, 2020, and we're so glad you're joining us today. My name is Lori Weir, and it's my privilege to serve as CEO for Strong Communities, a global movement that focuses on what is oh so right with people and communities of all kinds. Today, we're gonna to focus on the empathy talent theme through the experience of our special guest, Vic Sorrell. Welcome, Vic. Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm so glad to see you, my friend. And likewise. And I'm thrilled that I'm going to get to learn even more about empathy through your experience. So mm -hmm. before we dive into that, um, <clears throat> would you just share with our viewers and listeners um, where you are and what you do in life and you know, just a little bit about, about who you are and how you are? Sure. Uh, so Vic Sorrell, as you said, is my name and currently my focus, my project of focus, I, I have several usually going at all times, um, but my full-time employment is with Gilead Sciences, uh, who some may recognize as the company that recently uh, was in the news for having the, the one FDA-approved um, coronavirus treatment called remdesivir. Uh, but anyway, I work in the HIV business unit for that company, and I serve as a community liaison, which means I work in capacity building, basically, for organizations that support people who are living with HIV or who support HIV prevention services. And those organizations that I serve are in Middle Tennessee, West Tennessee, and all throughout the state of Alabama. And I make my home here in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, so. Love it. Such important. Which is how we met. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Such important work that you do. I'm just um, so grateful to get to bear witness to the impact that you have on the world and in the way that you serve. Um, would you mind sharing your top five with folks? Happy to. So at number one, I have connectedness, which I think is one we share, right? Yeah, it one. is. Yeah. And then move to empathy, today's focus uh, talent theme, and then to strategic, maximizer, mm. and developer. Mm. Wow. Wow, there is some <laughs> magic in that top five. <laughs> mm -hmm. Always yeah. thinking, never sits down, uh, moving, 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 feeling, 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 and um, needs a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. Uh, but really cares about doing good in the world and, uh, you know, really wants to, you know, try to leave things better than I found them. Uh, so. and, and, and you couldn't help but be wired in that way or to, to be motivated in those ways with that beautiful top five, you know, your, your investment in people through your developer and, um, and your panache in all things that you do through your maximizer. And it's a, it's a gift to get to watch your strategic kind of um, reign over all of your other talent themes um, with an eye toward efficiency, right? What's the best way to do it? The greatest way to polish it, uh, respectful of all people involved and in consideration of all possibilities and to do it in the highest and best form. That is my friend, Vic Sorrell. So uh, does that resonate with you? Thank you. Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, also something I was thinking when you were speaking is, you know, that maximizer, I guess it's the maximizer is just constantly in there as well, that everything has to be done in the least amount of time because we've got so much to do. We've got so much to get done mm -hmm. and we cannot spend, we cannot, it cannot take too long to do any one thing. Well, it's so, true. And, and, yeah. and that, that <laughs> is, um, that's, that's kind of your strategic and maximizer doing a duet, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. um, because strategic allows you to look at all the patterns and very quickly sort through them mm -hmm. and, uh, and discern which is the most efficient route to go. And Maximizer is always going to fuel that with mm -hmm. it not just getting done, but getting done really, really well. Yeah. So, um, so beautiful, so beautiful. And, and, you know, I'd love nothing more than for our viewers and listeners to hear more about all of your top five because they show up so beautifully. 
but today we're gonna we're gonna focus on um, just on empathy. But before we go there, I, I just have to ask, you know, we're, we're living in this extraordinary time, right? Unprecedented time. Mm -hmm. and, um, and when we're under stress or duress, we, we tend to act through our instincts. And so I'd love to know if one of your top five has really stepped up to support you in a wonderful way as you navigate all of this um, uncertainty around the global mm -hmm. pandemic? Sure. Uh, I think strategic, uh, you know, I, I'm instinctively strategic. So it's helped me in, you know, rearranging my work activities and how best to continue to be engaged with the people that I serve virtually. How best to do that, and you know, meaning, what are the best ways to engage? Um, even mm -hmm. not, not. I know that I'm going to be on a Zoom call, but you know, I, I want to be engaging. I, I don't want to be boring. I don't want to be just another one of their, you know, many humdrum uh, Zoom calls that they're going to have uh, all day long. So I guess there's a little maximizer in that too. But um, yeah, so but you know, constantly just trying to be aware of what's the the best way it could, could happen. Uh, also, the best ways of, of doing my daily tasks, you know, mm -hmm. uh, could I have this delivered instead of going out to get it? Could I, um, you know, wh what are the best ways to minimize my own um, exposure potentially? Yes. And then, you know, empathy does definitely come up as being one that has been in this game in a, in a very significant way the past three months because empathy has helped me sort of be aware of the needs of people around me. But empathy has also been my indicator of when I needed to go be quiet or whenever I needed to reach for my spiritual food because my empathy is on overdrive and I can feel myself being um, reduced or minimized by a lot of the negativity that's in the news and a lot of the struggle and pain that people around us are experiencing. So, wow, you know, empathy has definitely been in this game, but serving me, I would say strategic. Yes, yes. And, yeah. um, you know, as, as we've shared in the, in the past, um, empathy is such a beautiful gift, you mm -hmm. know, just mm -hmm. a beautiful gift. And, um, and one that often has to be calibrated mm -hmm. because, you know, like Gallup's definition is that, that people exceptionally talented in the empathy thing can sense other people's feelings and imagine themselves in other people's lives and situations. And um, whew, I tell you what, that's a journey, right? I mean, it's a journey sure. day, day to day. But in the midst, like you mentioned, in the midst of people in such pain and with such a barrage of, uh, of media that we're getting all of these very, very challenging uh, messages, it, does, it, does it feel for you, Vic, like, like, kind of, like you're kind of hijacked when you're overdosed with it, that you're just, you, you're, the feels are too big, that you have to retreat from the feels for a minute. It feels like to me that I could easily be hijacked. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've doing the work that I do and perhaps maybe the, the pace at which I'm used to doing it. Because like I said before, I tend to have a lot of projects going on. I learned several years ago that in order to continue, I had to be very aware of where my energy levels were at all times. So mm -hmm. if you're someone who senses the needs of others, which I do, and you are immediately inclined to taking care of the needs of others to the best that you can, mm -hmm. in spite of being mindful the whole time about, okay, but what about my needs and how are my needs being met? And is there a balance here as far as how I'm serving and how I'm uh, serving myself? Yeah. Uh, you know, I can see, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm very careful that I limit my intake of the news. I've been very diligent about keeping up with the progress of our situation, 
but I have a little bit in the morning and a little bit in the evening and that's it. I will not yeah. allow myself to have the, you know, the barrage of data uh, coming at me all day long. Um, so certainly I can, I can see how it, and, and I have my moments where it feels a bit overwhelming, but mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. tools. Yeah. I have tools to meet those moments yes. and that yes. makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yes, it absolutely does. And, and you know, what, what we know is that each of these themes for each of us individually falls somewhere on a continuum of being a raw, instinctive, compulsive, mm -hmm. uh, muscle memory response to, and that's not always productive for us and not always productive for other people. Um, and on the other end of that continuum being a fully intentional, conscious, conscientious um, strength, bona fide strength that is mm -hmm. consistently productive for us and for others. And, um, you know, when you I, said that, uh, I was just going to throw in really quickly because I will forget that empathy, the focus of the episode or the, the day, <clears throat> I can totally see how when empathy shows up in a very unrefined place, it'd be very easy to, I know what you need to people, Yes. you know, instead of respecting boundaries and realizing that, you know, sometimes people aren't ready to move. You might have been where they are and you might totally see it from 30,000 feet and everything that they need and how you can help and what you can do. However, if they're not ready, then your approach may be much more, um, debilitating to them than helping than helpful, you know? Oh man. Spoken like a gentleman who has developer in his top five, <laughs> a very, very refined developer and very, very refined empathy. I don't know how refined, but I have learned because I've had plenty of people tell me in the past, you know what? Thanks, but no thanks, <laughs> you know? And, and because I was, you know, I, so I've become very mindful of, yeah. Are you open to input? Does input feel like it might be a good thing? Mm -hmm. And then I have those few people in my close inner circle and bless their hearts because it's coming. It's coming at you. And you just got to learn that if you love me, tune me out. If you don't want to hear it right now, just tune me out. So there's that piece too. Well, I can tell you that, that those of us who love you are grateful <laughs> for that and grateful <laughs> for the fact that you see the possibility in us. You see the no the question. ever yeah yeah the ever present potential to uh, to take take it to a higher level and mm -hmm. uh, and so thank you thank you for sure. that so um, as we think about empathy do you recall when you when you first had those experiences of of really realizing your sensitivity to uh, other people. Mm -hmm. The first memories are from when I was very young. I, I, I was always very sensitive to what was going on in the household. I was very sensitive and, and aware of how mom was, how sister was, how dad was. Very aware um, mm -hmm. all the time. Acutely aware to the point that because not everyone around me knew that I was such an empathetic child that, you know, I developed some some issues mm -hmm. in in not being able to intellectually process the negativity you know that that is normal a normal part of family families are going to fight families are going to have conflict that's just you know that happens but i didn't know what my needs were with regard to understanding it and processing it like i do now so yeah that that's definitely one the other thing is you know from a very young age i've been a stage performer and a singer and so i always felt the audience i always knew I always knew what the applause was going to be before it ever happened because I could feel it. If it was going to be something, you know, strong, I knew it. And, and, and I also had the experience, you know, well, I'm not surprised because I knew that they weren't with me. So if the applause wasn't much and the response wasn't much, it's like, well, I, I knew that. I felt that. <laughs> so, yeah. Just, I knew that was not coming. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. And so, yeah. okay. I can, I can, I can appreciate that. <laughs> so, and what a wonderful theme for a performer to have, mm -hmm. you know, 
uh, for a performer, for a thought leader, for someone who is in service to other people, to that sensitivity. I, I see it in facilitators. I see it when you facilitate that you're, there's, you know, I, the, when I see you, it's like, um, well, you and I are wired similarly. So sometimes it's, it's just projection, right? <laughs> but it's like, I see the wheels turning with strategic of the if, thens, and what ifs of what's going on in that moment. And, and then that sensitivity that just gives you a finesse in the way that you move with your audience. Um, that's, it's beautiful to watch. Thank and, you. It has to be balanced though. You know, it's, it, it's so easy to get eaten up with so many energies <clears throat> that are around you mm -hmm. that, you know, it's learning to, pull yourself sort of in at times mm. when you need to and being unaffected by otherness is a really important skill for an empathetic person to to have in their toolkit oh absolutely and it can, you can seem very unfeeling and very cold mm. and at those at those times but no this is me managing my empathy this is mm. me managing my empathy because i've learned how to be more constructive in doing it this way so to yeah. people around you it can seem very confusing because on one hand you're this very loving feeling giving person and then sometimes you're completely not even it seems like present so interesting interesting mm -hmm. we, we I, I have another question for you that that will invite an opportunity for us to talk more about that and I, I, I look forward to that so um curious if and when or if and or when um your empathy plays with your other talent themes do you do you see when they kind of team up empathy developer right ah, yeah. which you know it you, you've already called that one um empathy connectedness you know mm -hmm. i if I can feel something about to happen and then my connectedness can literally go 5,000 miles down the road of all the different ways that that feeling could manifest into experiences for people and how it could ripple out, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. So um, strategic maximizer, <laughs> you know, this has got to be, this, we've, well, we've got to take it up. We've got to take it up this time. You know, we've got to, every time we do something, we have to, tweak and hone and develop and, and there's developer um but and so strategically how do we do that what what's our strategy to make sure that we're growing here mm -hmm. um yeah they they all play together yeah is, is it is it sometimes hard to to see where one stops and another starts for you well sort of like we were just saying you know with that that whole maximizer developer thing you know it can those can both kind of um, see, almost at times seem the same talent. Um, you know, you're trying to develop a project, but it's with the intention of it being as efficient and effective as possible, right? So they're yeah. both in there, but they can seem like one. And then if you're not really conscious about what drives that, and 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 the feeling behind the passion behind, which which could possibly come from empathy. It could all seem like one thing instead of three different mm -hmm. talent themes working together. So, yeah, yeah, it's, they're in there it, like Prego. It, <laughs> they're in there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, as we as we get more and more intimately acquainted and and understand the the rich texture of these mm -hmm. talent themes. Um, it, it's, it is sometimes hard to, to discern mm -hmm. where the demarcation point is because that none of them work in isolation, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so your, your empathy is colored or flavored by your other, um, the other four in your top five or actually the entirety of your, your results, mm -hmm. uh, as are mine. And, you know, we often talk about how we are um, 
as unique as our fingerprints. And it is just truth that we are all so distinctively designed to contribute in a way that no one else can contribute in the world. Um, and I believe too that it's designed such that it's a tapestry. And if we're not making our contribution, then there's that one void in the tapestry. So the whole thing is not complete. I was actually having that thought this morning about, can you imagine if you looked out at the ocean and certain waves were gone, just missing? Can you imagine what that would be like? How, how odd that would be? You know, because we think about the ocean and how majestic and beautiful, but the ocean takes all the waves in order to provide that experience and to provide that majesty. And I think we're, we're the same way. You know, we're each a wave and we, we need to show up. Yes, we do. We yep. absolutely do. Uh, or yep. the thread, you know, to, to your point about the tapestry. Yep. We need to show up. And um, yeah. And, and oh, I, yeah, I'm sorry. My, my connectedness is like, is like in this way, <laughs> in this ripple. It's reverberating, you know, to China at this point. <laughs> And, and, you know, what, and what, what we both love about, uh, in part about this work is that, that when we really get who we are and that we do have a unique value proposition, we can get, we can get peaceful with ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. we can, we can really own who we are and how we <laughs> are and, um, and quiet the mind from the chatter of uh, deficit-based thinking and, and fully step in. And one thing that I really love about strengths is that it literally gives you numbers on that. It tells you the likelihood of someone having the same talent themes in the same order as you based on all the people that have done the assessment. Because it's very easy to think anybody can coach, anybody can sing, well, a lot of people can sing. Anybody can, you know, do the things that I can do, but nobody can do them exactly the way that I can. That's right. And bring them in exactly the same formation, if you will, or, you know, combination, if you will, the same flavor, if you will. So, you know, I, and it's understandable that your flavor is not going to be everybody's choice. But at the same time, those of you, th for those people, and hopefully you're one of them, who love your flavor, why would you want to miss out? Why would you want them to miss out? You know, right. you want to bring that to, to the world and be okay when it's, we're not all going to, not every place is going to be our right place, but we're going to find our right places if we're willing to show up as we are. It's true. It is yeah. absolute truth. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and knowing, and knowing that we make a contribution just, just by showing mm -hmm. up as who we are, you know, oh. um, you know, it's or, almost or by not showing up. See, we, we make ah. a contribution as well. You know, it's like, if we withhold, that's also a contribution. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Were you, mm. was that input? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> see, there I went. Bam. <laughs> it just happened before I could ever help. Myself. Oh, no, no, no. You know, I love it. You know, I absolutely love it. Um, you know, talking about all the, all the beauty of this and, um, and, you know, there's, um, there's a duality to these two, right? Mm -hmm. And so do you, do you find that empathy and one of your other themes kind of rub each other the wrong way periodically or frustrate you in some way? Oh, wow. I can really think of, you know, empathy will a lot of times guide me to slow down, mm. to be, to relax, mm. to, to know that, you know, all is well. Um, I don't have to do everything all the time and maximizer and strategic are like, Oh, the hell you don't. Here's how. <laughs> so you're moving too slow again. You're going to get behind all those things. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, you know, and empathy's like, mm, just, just breathe. Just, you know, if you show up, your presence is the gift mm -hmm. and how you show up is the gift. 
it's not so important that, and you've got Maximizer over here and be like, well, they had a certain experience last time and you need to make sure that you have QRX52 in place this time, because if you don't, then you're not serving. You call that service, that's not service, you know. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, I bet I, I would bet that our listeners um, can <laughs> certain, can totally appreciate that, right? Well, totally I can tell you what they're either thinking I'm nuts or they're like I totally get it. That yeah. happens to me, and yeah. you know that's just the reality of being willing to be seen. You know, those that are that are going to resonate are going to resonate, and it's going to be helpful. But you know, there are others that are going to just be like, <laughs> well, he's that's an energetic young man. <laughs> True. Yes. True. And <laughs> an energetic young man that um, I love the way your empathy takes care of you because mm -hmm. that's not the case for everybody, Vic. And I, I know that comes with a lot of, of um, self-awareness and self-discovery and investment in, and in struggle and yeah. struggle and realizing it does not have to be that way. Yes. There is, there is a beautiful place of service and self-service there's an intersection mm -hmm. and and sometimes it takes a little honing and a little work and I, I continue to work at it right it's not that the work ever ends it's just realizing that service to depletion and then isolation and then repeating the cycle is maybe not the sweetest spot yeah mm -hmm. there are other ways to do it mm -hmm. for sure it's just, it's beautiful to hear. And, and so I want to encourage others who have, who have empathy to, um, to claim some of it for yourself mm -hmm. uh, in, in the form of giving yourself some grace, um, in, mm -hmm. in the form of championing your self-care and your self-love because, because none of us can deliver to the world what we're here to deliver if we have not learned to put our, our oxygen mask on, you know, mm. um, it's, um, and it's one of the toughest lessons I think for all of us to learn. Vic, would you agree with that? Yes. And to have the faith that if something is draining you, there's a better way. Mm -hmm. we, a lot of times, you know, we, we get confused by being introduced to certain themes um, as kids, uh, you know, no pain, no gain. Uh, anything worth anything is 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 going to be hard work. Mm -hmm. um, nothing nothing good comes easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to so, be successful, you got to work hard. Mm -hmm. It doesn't it doesn't always come to the most talented. It comes to the ones that work the hardest, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I think that it we have an opportunity sort of to evolve with those concepts. There's nothing wrong with working hard, and absolutely, it's not. It doesn't always need to be hard. It doesn't always need to be depleting. Um, some things will be. You know, there's always going to be some things in life that we just don't enjoy and that we still need to do. We still need to do our taxes. Mm -hmm. We still need to do, you know, certain things. We need to clean the gutters or have it make sure it gets done, whatever. But at the end of the day, the day in, day out of depletion, depletion, depletion in the name of just survival, I don't think it's necessary. And I think we're evolving beyond that feeling that that's just the way life is yeah yeah and 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 potentially for some of us some some disruption of our norms mm. um have given us an opportunity to contemplate what that what that can look like mm -hmm. you know doing it differently so um would love 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 to know mm -hmm. If, if you could share with the world what, what it's really important for them to understand about the empathy talent theme and how it shows up in people, what would you want everybody who loves you to know about your empathy talent theme? Feeling requires strength. Mm. I think there's a lot of misinterpretation around empathy that if you're a feeler, then you're weak and you're a doormat and you're over here with all these, you know, warm and fuzzies that don't really equate to any kind of bottom line. Um, so what I would say is when you see a feeler, especially if you are a developer, if you're a manager of someone who is feeling and you and you have the um, 
opportunity to work with them on honing their empathy. Mm -hmm. um, empathy is a gold mine. Empathy is really everything. When you're talking about negotiation, when you're talking about people skills, when you're talking about sales of any kind, you have to be, well, you need to be able to feel what's going on and you have an opportunity to learn how to, to some degree, separate yourself at the appropriate times from everything you feel all the time and recognizing that not everything that's coming in all the time is yours, right? There's a lot going on around you. And it does require strength and finesse and, and strategy to feel well, mm -hmm. if, that, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, to feel well. Yeah. Um, if you're going to love well, then you need to be able to feel well. So. Mm. Very, that is very, very, very nice. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful thoughts. Beautiful thoughts. Um, by chance, can you think of like a superhero or, or um, a fictional character or a famous person that you think really embodies the empathy talent as you experience it? Well, I tell you what, maybe not a superhero of sorts and maybe not a fictional character, but I think Oprah Winfrey is the mm -hmm. epitome of empathy mm -hmm. and learning over the years how to manage empathy to a place where she could be more and more peaceful and also more and more constructive and impactful. Yeah. And I watched her do it, you know, over the years, because I've paid attention to her career for, for since I was 15 years old and I'm 42 now. So that's a long time. And she, she did change. She did change. And a lot of times it seems like she withdrew from people. And she, you know, especially in the South, we have, you ain't, you, you changed. You're not mm -hmm. who you used to be. Mm -hmm. you, I don't even know who you are anymore. Well, my heart's the same. I'm learning how to manage my heart in a way that I can show up with it and not be depleted as a result of that intention yeah to be an open-hearted person you know so i that'd be my answer Oprah ah, Winfrey. love that love that mm -hmm. i hope yeah. she sees this well if she does i just would like for her to know that she she has just made such an incredible difference in the world for so many people and thank you thank you oprah for just being willing yeah. and is there any chance you might run in 2020 <laughs> jesus <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late <laughs> well regrettably or thankfully we we're we're almost out of time <laughs> um, oh Vic what a joy to spend time with you today and and likewise I, I, I know that you are in high demand always and um, and you are devoted to so many extraordinary and impactful projects that um, taking time out to spend a few minutes with us is um, is most is, appreciated is my gift and is my pleasure and I just thank you for the invitation it's been really fun yeah oh we'll do it again we'll do okay. it again so um folks thank you for being with us i wanted to share a couple of big just bear with me for just a minute sure. i wanted to share a couple of things with you um you know we've had a lot of client feedback uh, around the challenges of maintaining meaningful connection among teams during this pandemic and uh, we have t historically done all live events but we are now offering some virtual experiences and so we want to just let you know that um, that we we do have some virtual experiences in place to serve you at this point, and we're also creating a little more space for uh, professional strengths coaching. So, for those of you that find yourself in in um, transition around your thoughts with respect to your career, etc., please reach out to us at engage at strongcommunities.coach. That's engage, E-N-G-A-G-E, -E, at strongcommunities.coach. Um, we would be more than, more than happy to discuss how we might be able to serve you <clears throat> in better understanding uh, your instinctive value proposition and, uh, and how you might aim it at 
personal and professional outcomes that provide more fulfillment and energy and all good things for you. So thank you again for joining us, uh, whether, whether you were with us live or whether you will uh, be with us in the future, we thank you. We continue to navigate these uncharted waters and we hope and pray that you will stay safe and stay well. And to you, Vic Sorrell, my biggest gratitude, my friend, such a joy. Thank you so much. Right back at you. Thank you too. Thank you, dear. Ciao for now. Mwah.